the first thought that came into my mind was to create a world. I've been creating worlds in a lot of my previous games. But I really wanted this world to be different. To start off with, I wanted this world to be as beautiful as any world has ever been on any computer. I also wanted it so that, that you could do anything you like in this world. You were very much, you were given all these powers, these huge powers in this world, and you could do anything you like. You could be unspeakably cruel and evil and mean, or you could be wonderfully kind and benevolent, and allow you the freedom to do any one of those. And I'd seen a film called The Dark Crystal. I don't know if you've ever seen The Dark Crystal. In The Dark Crystal, there is um, the Skeksis Tower. is all black and horrible. And all the landscape around the, the, the Skeksis Tower is black and horrible. And wouldn't it be cool in a game is everything that you do in the world changes the very, the very landscape, everything that you own, to reflect what you're doing in the world. So it's a world which reflects you as a games player. And then into that, introduce these little villagers, these little people. You are nothing without the belief of these little people. Without their belief, you are not, have no power at all. So that's the sort of macro, the big scale image. And then the other, other part is the, this creature, a creature that you can take, any living thing in the world you can pick up and nurture and grow up and give a personality. You tell this creature what is right and wrong, you teach this creature anything you like, and it is a completely artificial life, artificial intelligent creature, as sophisticated as anything that has ever been done before. The first thing that we're going to look at is, um, is, the, is the world itself. This is your citadel, this is where you reside, um, and this, is, um, this obviously changes and morphs to reflect what you're like as a games player, just as well, I said the landscape around it changes and morphs. So uh, you'll notice the first thing in the game that um, unlike all my previous games that had a huge number of icons in Dungeon Keeper there were some 64 icons, this has none. There are no icons in this game whatsoever. The only thing there is is this hand. And this hand replaces those icons and it also replaces the keyboard. Um, I wanted to sort of redesign and re-look at the way these games were played. So, All you do to scroll around the world is to literally click and grab the landscape. Now, if we look at uh, this world, we've got a little um, village here. This is a, um, a Celtic village, and the village life in here just goes on. They're not even aware of me. They're farming the fields over there. They're, they're going out and doing their daily business here. Um, and Within this village, they have a storage pit where they collect different things. And I'm going to show you a bit of a party trick now. Um, and I'm actually going to use the keyboard for this because I have to go closer than I normally do. So if you have a look in that storage pit, you can just see here there is a barrel. And on that barrel uh, is a little apple. And in that apple, you can just see there is a worm. And I can go from looking at this worm and pull back and actually look at the whole village, obviously, and even go further back and look at the whole world. And as you see, there is very, very little in the, in the, in the change of the frame rate of the game. It's that, that resolution and the scalability of you going in and coming out of the game which is, which is so enticing, uh, enticing to people. Now, into this village, into this world, I'm going to show you a creature now, an artificial life creature that I have nurtured up. He is one that I specially prepared for the show, because otherwise we'd be here for a very long time. And this creature, as I said, you get to teach it anything you want, however sophisticated that is. So I will put him down uh, here. And... Um, Here he is, he's just going to wander around the world, looking at different things. You decide whether he's doing things that are right or wrong. He's just got someone's between his legs at the moment. Um, let's pick them up. And he's decided to eat that little person. Now, you may think, well, that's, I don't like him doing that. I don't like him eating my little people. I don't want him to use it as food. So all you do is click on him and you're now absolutely interacting with him. And I'm going to tell him off now for eating that little person. I tell him off just by slapping him with the mouse 
um, just by pushing him around. And that t tells him the lesson that it was bad, the last thing he did was bad. And he obviously feels a little bit depressed by this. And so what you can do alternatively, you can just, uh, you can just tickle him and caress him. Like you stroke a, a cat or a dog, I can put my hand through his hair. I can uh, tickle his foot. Um, sometimes he doesn't like his foot being. I can tickle his foot and slowly that tells him, it gives him a lesson of what is right and wrong. Now this creature is incredibly, incredibly sophisticated and he looks at the way you're playing the game. It's not only lessons like that he learns, he's actually looking at and watching you playing the game. Just as a child looks at his father, so this creature is looking at you. If you're doing horrible, nasty, mean things in the world, he will think that is good. That is the right thing to do. This is n now not inside the game, uh, game world at all. He's just, um, he's just inside this editor, but he allows me to show some cool things off about the creature. The first thing um, it to note to remember is that at the start of the game, he's actually this small, tiny little thing. He's not this huge thing. And then as you nurture and grow him up, he gets bigger and bigger and bigger until he's absolutely huge within the world. Not only does he change his size, but if you encourage him to eat a lot, he will actually get fatter, fatter and fatter, or he will get thinner and thinner. If you encourage him to fight, you, creatures can fight each other. They, we have an absolutely full fighting system, as complete as you'd find in any fighting game. If you encourage him to fight and to exercise, he will actually start getting stronger and more muscular. If you encourage him to learn spells and learn magic, then he's not, he's not exercising so much and he'll actually get weaker. And anything in between, so he can be fat and weak, or he can be strong and, and fat, or anything in between those. But not only that, if you have encouraged him to do bad and evil things, then he will um, gradually change to reflect that. He will change to become more evil looking, and more vicious looking. Or if you encourage him to do good things, he'll uh, um, become more good looking. Now the unique thing about this is, you can take this creature out of the single player game, at any point in the single player game, go online, meet other people's creatures, learn off, your creature will learn off other people's creatures and then put that creature back into the single player game again and continue playing. And the thing about it is, your creature will have a unique personality. That creature, you have given the personality to that creature. And there will be no other creature in the world with your, the personality that you've given it. And your creature will look visually unique to you. Absolutely visually unique to you. Not only does he change like this, but also when he gets in fights, he can get, he can get wounded. And we've got a real-time damage system, so if I just um, stick him with a pin here, you notice this trickle of blood perfectly moves down his body. Every time you put a CD in the drive, when you're playing the game, you can play any CD music, he remembers the CD ident key. If you're mean to him while that piece of music is playing, then the next time the piece of music comes on, he will put his hands over his ears. If he, you are nice to him while that music is playing, the next time he plays the music, you play the music, he may well learn to dance in perfect time to that music. These little people, their job in this world is to worship you. You must, your objective is to get as many of these little people within this world to worship you. And at the moment, these people down here worship me, but there are lots of people in the world over here. We've got, um, we've got a North American Indian tribe which do that doesn't worship me at the moment. I can either go in there and I can kill a few of them or make them suffer or destroy a few of their buildings and they will worship me because they are frightened. Or I can go in there and give them food and gifts and they will worship me out of respect. And what happens when they finally worship me, they build uh, this um, this thing here. This is a, uh, a totem and it allows me to summon them to worship me at my worship site. So I can pull that totem up and they will all go off and start worship me, worshipping me at the, uh, this worship site. So if I just speed the game up, you can watch that they are now worshipping away. And the reason you want them to worship at your worship site 
is because you need their power. You are nothing as a god without belief. And slowly, these icons start building up until these spells appear. And what you can do is pick up one of these spells and cast them as magic. Now, if you and I are playing a, playing a, a multiplayer game, you may see that I've got lots of these people and you may think, ah, oh, we'll destroy this storage pit. All the people will then run out of food and they'll starve. So I may think, ah, oh, well, I know what you're going to do there. I will protect this. So you can protect this through a shield. And the way you cast a shield is literally to draw the shield on the landscape. And wherever you draw that shield, this shield will appear. That now protects that area of the landscape. But this is drawing magic from the worship site all the time. Now remember, you can teach all of these spells to your creature, so he can do all of this magic stuff. This is a fireball, and I can, I can throw a fireball at the, uh, at the shield to show you what happens. Um, you can see it's just, uh, just bouncing off that shield, so I really want these, these magic, it's actually gone away because we've run out of power. I really want these magical effects to be the most spectacular that's been in any game ever. So, also what you can do is <coughs> use secret gestures to, uh, to power up your spells. For example, this is a secret gesture for the fireball. Oops, no. I do that again. It's a square. And it turns this into, um, into this sort of cataclysmic spell. It's not only destructional spells that we've got in the game, but you've got uh, creational spells. For example, um, I've got, uh, this is a forest. If I cast this forest near a village, you'll see the little villagers will chop down the trees and make more houses and build more things for me. So I'll just cast the um, forest down here. So she just creates a whole lot of a whole lot of trees, and you can see the sort of visual beauty that we want with uh, with some of the, the some of the spell effects in the game. The difference between single player game and multiplayer game. In the single player game, you are playing through a story. It is not like any of my previous games. All of my previous games have been level based. You play one level after another, doing the same thing over and over again. In this. You play through a story. At the start of the story, you just have a few little people that believe in you, and then you discover you're much more powerful and the world gets bigger. You discover you can, um, you can actually, um, you can actually uh, nurture a creature up as another part of the story. The multiplayer game has got uh, the gathering, which uh, allows you to take your creature and meet other people's creatures and learn from other cre people's creatures. We've got black and white worlds, which allows you to um, have up to eight players all playing across a landscape, all fighting each other with, this, with these spells. They're creatures fighting hand to hand or with magic. And then the lastly, the black and white universe, which allows you to take a landscape and plug it into a larger overall landscape.